good morning and welcome to this webcast about Microsoft Desktop Virtualization Technologies, RDS, AppV, MedV, USV, and VDI. My name is Anna Kristen and I'll be the English dubber for this presentation made by Fabrizio Volpe, Microsoft MVP on Directory Services. This first part will be about an introduction to virtualization tools and technologies and about user state virtualization. When speaking about virtualization, we could approach the argument from different angles. We could start from the desktop, from the application, or from the server, for example. We'll talk about the five technologies Microsoft gives us to virtualize the working environment of the end user. So our focus is not only on the desktop, but on the whole user experience. What is desktop virtualization? We want to virtualize data and user settings. This is not something new. Folder redirection, offline files, and roaming profiles have been around, let's say, since the NT4 operating system. Of course, in Windows 7 and in Windows 2008, the aforementioned technologies have been modified and updated to be in line with today's needs. The first brick in the wall is removing user data from the desktop, and without that first step, all the following actions are really complicated. The idea is that we don't care about the endpoints. Users are able to connect from a laptop or from an internet kiosk. Users are no longer people that work necessarily at the company, but they need their information and settings to work in an efficient and transparent way. So, our first goal is to remove the user settings from the endpoints. The second logical step is to virtualize applications so the user's PC has nothing installed locally. That's why, in 2012, the user's work area is not something we'll deploy as we did in 2002, for example, the PC with the operating system, applications, and data all on the local hard disk. To make an application available, such as Microsoft Office, we can use Application Virtualization or Remote App. An application is now a service running on the memory, and we can also simultaneously launch software that is incompatible because we have what's called isolation, dividing the different processes, so that they are executed in parallel and unrelated zones of the computer's memory. So, we can use a program we no longer need to modify the registry, to write files on the file system, or to add DLL, and so on. With application virtualization, we'll have a packet that contains all we need to make things work. The alternative is to make applications available from the server or remote app. A quick demo. We have an icon that's pointing to an internet exposed server and we are able to run VoIP software with no local installation at all, but we have our settings. Using the voice redirection technology of Windows 2008 R2, we can make a VoIP call from our desktop using a server installed application. Getting to the point of the demo, the application is something we deploy using the internet but granting our user that his or her settings and data will always be there. The last step is, we still want to give a desktop to the user, but the desktop is a virtual object, i.e. a virtual desktop. One of the big advantages of virtual desktops is that we don't have to change our enterprise policies. Using remote app, we have an additional level of management and control to deploy. If we use a virtual desktop, we can keep our existing policies and management habits and tools. Patching with WSUS antivirus is the same thing as having a physical laptop or desktop. The biggest difference is that we can use our workstation also from a web interface. We'll be able to use our enterprise desktop from the internet, keeping all our settings and data. We have to evaluate and decide if it's worth the effort to give a dedicated desktop to every single user, a personal virtual desktop, or to create a pool of virtual desktops that will contain a group of identical operating system images. Users will be connected to the first available virtual desktop in the pool, and during logon, their profile and data will be loaded from the network. After logoff, the desktop will revert to the original settings, 
so it's twice as important to have the user data saved on a network or remote resource. A personal virtual desktop will keep user data and settings, but they require more disk space and resources. In that schema, we'll be going from an easy to implement solution to a more complex one. A virtual desktop infrastructure is for sure more complex than user data virtualization. We can take one or more of the listed solutions and use them together in our company. User State Virtualization USV. We want our users to be able to receive their settings, profile, data, and so on everywhere. Application Virtualization (APV). The application is now a closed packet, an EXE or MSI file, that's able to run autonomously. It's launched on request and closed as soon as it's no longer needed. The footprint on our operating system is zero because we are not installing anything. Updating an existing application with AppV means we only have to update the package. We're not removing or installing anything. The only thing we need is the virtualization client on our workstations. So we have a tool that enables legacy applications, but also the fast deployment of new software. MedV is something similar to the well-known XP mode. What we are going to do is create one or more system images, Windows XP with Service Pack 3, with the applications installed. Every time we need to run a software that doesn't work on Windows 7, a virtual machine with Windows XP will start. That's something transparent to the user who will only see one difference, he'll have a window with the XP style. The biggest task required here will be to create and deploy the virtual PCs. Users need access to the VHD files of the aforementioned XP installation. Remote App is similar to the old Windows 2003 terminal services. Terminal services were meant to give a full working environment to the users. After the logon to the server, the user had a Windows 7-like graphic interface, even if the starting point was, for example, a Windows XP client. We used a remote desktop session to do what we have now in the list as session virtualization. We want something more, to put the icons on the user desktop so that he's able to launch applications that are installed on the server in a transparent way. So one server will give service to a lot of users, and every update we need to do will be made only once on the server. We're enabled to install as many servers, called session hosts, as we need, creating a farm for load balancing and high availability. Talking about the hardware, remember that in a typical scenario, we'll not use a lot of CPU, but we'll need quite a few RAM and data disks as fast as possible. Virtual Desktop Infrastructure This is the last step in which we are deploying a whole virtualized desktop, not a group of applications. It's a good solution, for example, if we have developers or users that need deep customizations of their working environment. The aforementioned is useful in getting past the limitations we have in session hosts or remote app solutions. User environment is always limited by a series of parameters needed to enable users to work side by side without errors. We may think that virtual desktops are a viable solution for smart users, while remote app is a working answer to the standard user's needs. We can keep a backup of the single virtual machine so that a rollback to a previous working state is always available and the user feeling is the same as he would have working on a standard desktop, but he's always a piece of our data center data. Using the gateway capabilities of Windows 2008 R2, we need no VPN connection to enable users to work on their desktop from home. The process is open an HTTPS interface, authentication, access to the desktop. Additional security tools are available so that we can keep a stricter control on the authorized users if we need it. The technologies we're talking about are terrific and simple to deploy. The real problem is keeping them secure and working, monitoring disk space, performances, and so on. 
With virtual desktops, we have the power to deploy 100 desktops with a few steps. The real challenge is to keep the environment as clean and fast as possible. User State Virtualization It's all about three instruments to remove user data from the endpoint. Roaming Users Profile Our profile folder is turned to a network folder with access granted only to the owner. In the old implementation of the user profiles, there were a lot of problems related to the amount of data, pictures, documents, music files, and so on, that was included inside the profile folder. Folder redirection is a solution to the aforementioned issue. We keep access to the usual folders for the documents, images, and so on, but they are redirected in a transparent way to a series of network folders. The result is to have a much smaller user profile. Now we can use folder redirection with the offline files of Windows 7 to keep a synced copy of our data locally. That's important in order to keep access to our information when we are offline. The three technologies we have just explained enable our users to work in an efficient manner. Windows 7 changes the way the ntuser.dat the user part of the registry is synchronized. In previous versions, the aforementioned was synchronized only during the log off phase. Now we're enabled to organize scheduled synchronizations so that an error, for example, an incorrect log off process, doesn't damage the integrity of the profile. There is a group policy regarding the offset of the sync so that we don't have all the clients running the sync at the same moment. There is a background upload of the roaming user profiles registry file while the user is logged on. The policy has settings for a set interval or to sync at a specified time of the day. To avoid having all users syncing at the same time, we have a random value added to the policy setting for every user. In Windows XP, we had five folder redirections available. In Windows 7, we have 13 redirections we're able to use. It's the so-called customerization of the working place, which means we try to give to the user an environment he likes as much as possible. Connected to all the aforementioned topics, we have the fast user logon in Windows 7. The first network access we do, including folder redirections and offline files, may be really slow. Fast user logon enables us to log on as soon as the contents of the folders are ready on the cache. So our logon time is much shorter than in previous versions of the operating system where roaming was enabled. There is a good document called Infrastructure Planning and Design for User State Virtualization that helps us analyze our situation in five steps. The purpose is to give advice on what is worth virtualizing and what is not. Now we've closed the user aspect of the discussion. Now the focus will be on application virtualization and on compatibility issues, especially with legacy software. The Microsoft Desktop Optimization Pack is a software bundle that we're entitled to use if we have a software assurance with Microsoft. 